supplements. It's the world that we live in. We are constantly bombarded with take this magical pill or mix this pre-workout and you'll become a superhero and you'll live forever and you'll have shining hair. And as endurance athletes, we have to sift through all of this garbage and figure out what is actually worth taking or will I get busted for doping if I put this stuff in my bottles? For a long time, I never even considered creatine as a supplement. In fact, for a really long time, I never even considered supplements at all. Just in the last few years, I've started looking a little bit more into supplements because I've been trying to gain every little advantage I can in sports performance. I'm not gonna lie, for a long time, I thought creatine was banned. And maybe this was my elementary thinking or equating creatine with steroids because apparently both of these things turn you into bodybuilders. But after some extra thought and research, I now only take two supplements and one of those supplements is creatine. And I'm gonna explain why I've come to that conclusion in the rest of this video. Creatine is one of the most researched supplements in the world, which means at a minimum, it's safe to use. And at a maximum, it could help you win a lot more races, but we'll get to that later. Our bodies already have creatine. So supplementing creatine would be supplemental. You're just adding more fuel to the fire. All right, let's take a little blast to the past and go back to some high school physiology. We're gonna talk about ATP and energy production because this is an important aspect to think about with creatine. ATP or adenosine triphosphate is the fuel that your body uses to move muscles. It's the energy that we need not only to win bike races, but to do every little thing that we do. There are three main ways your body uses ATP for energy. The first energy production system is the aerobic system. And you're like, oh yeah, I know what you're going now. I, I didn't understand what you were talking about at first, but I'm picking up what you're putting down. The aerobic system is for endurance activity. It's low intensity and you can do it basically all day. Almost everything over a five minute effort would be considered a part of this aerobic energy production. We use it a lot as endurance athletes. The next energy system is the anaerobic system, otherwise known as the lactate system. And this is what we use for 30 seconds to five minute efforts. And it can create a lot more energy, but it doesn't last as long. And the last system is your neuromuscular energy production system, or otherwise known as ATP-PC. And PC stands for phosphocreatine. Bing, bing, bing. Creatine, there it is, our word of the day. And this is where we're going with this. ATP PC system is used for all out max efforts, which means a lot of sprints or lifting in the gym is going to use this system. And this is the main reason that I wanted to explain all of this because I think that that is the main way that supplementing with creatine can increase performance is by increasing what you can do with your neuromuscular or ATP PC system. So this is primarily sprinting and lifting. This 2023 review on creatine supplementation and endurance performance really lays it out there quite nicely. They even include this beautiful table that looks at a lot of the previous studies looking at creatine use and endurance performance. And they have a lot of studies in there that include cyclists, and it is shown pretty clearly that it improves your sprint performance in cycling. There's also this really nice chart, which shows all of the benefits of creatine at different intensity levels. Think of this chart like the three zone chart that we use when we're talking about polarized training. You've got your zone one, zone two, and zone three, which are both defined by your LT1 and LT2. But then on this chart, just add a fourth category for your all out max sprints. And this chart really shows us and gives us the visual of uh, the benefits of creatine at each intensity level. And what they've concluded is that as the intensity level increases, the benefits of creatine become more and more substantial. I also came across this study that looked at sprint power in elite cyclists. And I liked the way they conducted this test because they thought, well, 
Usually cyclists aren't just sprinting. They're usually fatigued at the end of a race when they are sprinting. And so their protocol actually involved a two and a half hour workout with the sprints added in towards the end of that workout to see do they actually sprint better with creatine at the end of a fatiguing workout. And it turns out, yes, they do. The creatine helped these elite cyclists to sprint better even with fatigue. So it seems very clear to me that creatine can help you attack and it can help you sprint. So if you think that you might be doing either of those two things, sprinting or attacking, which I think would be maybe most of us, then creatine could be beneficial. If you watch any of the big road races on TV, there's usually a point at the race where they ride at a moderate intensity for hours and then the fireworks start flying. Basically what creatine does is gives you bigger fireworks to shoot off when it comes time to shoot them off. So if somebody attacks, you can get on their wheel a little bit better, you can put out a higher power to stay there, or you can even put in a late race winning attack or even just improve your sprint enough to win the race at the end. On top of all the benefits it provides for sprint power and high intensity, it also seems that there might be some added benefits in the recovery process by supplementing with creatine as well. Since we're talking about sprinting at max power and throwing down mad watt attacks, I think it's a crucial note here to say you need to have a good pedal setup. My go-to pedal setup is Look. I use Look Keo Blade Ceramics for my road racing and for the less gnarly gravel races that I might do. And then I'll swap over to the X-Track Race Carbon for the mountain bike races and more gnarly gravel races I do. And if you still haven't opened up the magical door to training with a power meter or you just want a, an easier power meter that you can transfer from bike to bike, well then you can try out the brand new, just launched this year, look exact power meter pedal. And because you guys are such good friends of mine, Look has given me a discount code to share with you. You just use this discount code, RADDADDIZZLE, with the link in the description and you'll get 15% off your order. Thank you, Look. If there were no downsides, then people would just take everything, right? I mean, there are potential harms in taking supplements and creatine is no different. There are potential downsides. However, I think the benefits of creatine outweigh pun intended, the potential downsides of taking it. The only real downside I see to taking creatine is the potential weight gain that it could cause. Athletes saw anywhere from a one to six pound increase while supplementing with creatine in the studies that I researched. And most of this weight gain is associated with water weight. However, I think that we make water weight the bad guy in all these scenarios when really you might be increasing water weight and muscle mass and because you're taking creatine while you're going to the gym you might just be getting stronger and getting bigger which is the effect of going to the gym in fact there is research that suggests that prolonged supplementation of creatine does not alter the ratio of water weight to muscle mass which really just means we're over exaggerating this whole water weight thing so basically i don't think that the weight you could gain from taking creatine outweighs the potential benefit in fact, that 2023 review on creatine supplementation lays out all of the benefits of creatine and then they conclude that these purported benefits may counter the gains in body mass and have a positive effect on enhancing endurance performance and recovery. Creatine allows you to throw down mad watts when you need them to either stay with the leaders or drop the leaders and win the race. That's important. We need those. I need all the help I can get in those situations. One exception to this might be on a really hilly course, one that involves a lot of climbing, because then the weight gain might become a little bit more important. In fact, most of the time in these studies, when it was talking about weight bearing sports, it was using running as that weight bearing sport, whereas 
cycling is a non-weight bearing sport and so the potential weight gain from creatine is really not as significant as we give it credit. The only scenario that the research really suggests where creatine wouldn't be helpful is this prolonged, continuous, time trial, steady state effort. So for somebody who might be doing Unbound 200, who lets themselves get dropped from the lead group so they can time trial the entire thing, well then maybe creatine doesn't make sense. But for somebody who plans to be in a group, maybe even the lead group, and wants to be able to out sprint their competitors at the end, well then creatine might be helpful. I've only been using creatine for a little over a year now, but here's the method and the protocol that I've come up with. I start taking creatine right after my last big race of the season during that transition or the beginning of my off season, because this gives my body time to get through that pre-loading stage where you're taking about 10 to 20 grams a day for a week or two, because there is a pre-loading process to bulking it up in your system. Once you get through that week or two preload system, you can start only taking five grams a day from there on out to just maintain that creatine in the system. The research also suggests something very similar to this protocol as well. This is also the time of the year when I'm doing my heaviest lifting in the gym. And this was the primary reason I began taking creatine in the first place. When we go to the gym, the primary energy production system that we use is that ATP PC system. So if I can take creatine and add a little bit more fuel for that system to use, then I can maybe lift a little bit more or lift a little bit longer and get a little bit more out of myself in the gym. And yes, strength training does improve cycling performance. I've done multiple videos on this topic as well in the last few months. Be sure to check those out. So basically taking creatine allows you to maximize the benefits that you could get while in the gym. I think the biggest question concerning creatine supplementation is should you keep taking it throughout the race season? And last year, when I started taking creatine, I had considered myself more of a crit racer, in which that case, it does make sense to keep taking creatine throughout most of the year, because in most crits, weight isn't an issue, so even if I did gain six pounds, it wasn't gonna hinder my race performance in most scenarios. In fact, in crits, I needed more of that high intensity, max power effort, and creatine would have only benefited in those scenarios. However, this year, with my focus being on more ultra endurance and gravel events and mountain bike events and these just longer events, I could see how that extra weight could play a bigger role in my performance. And there's less of those race winning attacks happening in those races. So I could very well see the negatives outweighing the positives. But then I think back to gravel gnats last year and there were several big surges where it determined who was in the lead group and who wasn't, and I didn't make some of those surges. So thinking in those specific scenarios, if I had a few more watts in the tank, maybe I could have stayed in that lead group for a bit longer and made it to the finish line with them. So I could see the benefit in that scenario. So basically to sum it all up, I don't really know if I'm going to keep taking creatine. I am taking it right now because the race season hasn't started. And I'm thinking that I might start to taper off of it around BWR California because that race does have a lot of climbing and I want to do well there. And then at that point, I probably won't take it for the rest of the season. I wanna wrap up this video by saying you should experiment with creatine for yourself and come to a conclusion on your own. You should, if you wanna try it out, you should keep a journal of how much you're taking, how you feel, what your weight is throughout that process, what your power is throughout that process, uh, training your sprint and seeing the increase in your sprint power because at the end of the day, you need to come to a conclusion on your own. You're gonna have to put on your lab coat, do some experiments and figure out is creatine for me or not. All right, that's all I've got for this video. If you wanna support my video creating ability, be sure to check out the links in the description. I'd say that the number one you can way you can support me is to go to Patreon and just give me your hard earned cash. I mean, if you pay Netflix for the junk that you watch there, hey, I'm helping you get better at riding bikes. So if that's worth $10, then consider going over to Patreon. That's all I've got for this one. I'll see you in the next one.